Heather K with Book of Walls here, and I'm here for book haul number two. I know earlier I said it was going to be a while before I had another book haul, but I lied. I guess I have a problem with buying books now because since I watch so many book, um, book videos, yeah, I have a problem buying books watching so much book videos now. And so actually I'll have haul number three coming soon because Barnes & Noble just had a sale that if you, it was free shipping over anything, 20, over $25, and they also had a 50% off teens bestseller so I got four books for like 25 bucks which is amazing and like two of them are hardcovers. Let's show you today what I got from the library. The first one I got is Bloom by Elizabeth Scott. I don't know if you can see it. It's got a really lime green cover. It's a really cute cover. It's, based, it's really simple. I got this one. It wasn't really on my to read list. I've just heard a lot of good things about Elizabeth Scott and this is one of the very few Elizabeth Scott books that my library had so I just wanted to get it and I will read the back of the book cover for you. Lauren has had a good life. Decent grades, great friends, a boyfriend ever girl lust after. So why is she so unhappy? It takes the arrival of Evan Kirkland for Lauren to figure out the answer. She's been holding back. She's been denying herself a bunch of things because she's been staying with her loyal and gorgeous, gorgeous boyfriend Dave. Is, the right, is it the right thing to do? After all, who would give up the perfect guy? But as Dave starts talking more and more about their life together, planning a future that Lauren can't simply see herself in, and as Lauren craving for Evan and moreover who she is with, who is with Evan, becomes more, all the more fierce. Lauren realizes that she must make a choice before one is made for her. So it sounds like this book is basically she's with a girl. I'm sorry, she's not with a girl. <laughs> she's with a guy that she's that every girl wants, but she I guess she doesn't want him that much. And it takes another guy to, for her to see what she does want. I guess decisions are being made for her that she doesn't want to be made. It looks like a really light, cute read. I'm probably going to read this first, knock it out, put it on good reads, all that stuff. The next book I got was basically because of this movie, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Ignore the price tag on there. I can't peel it off. It'll get all sticky and nasty. I'll just leave that. Nick and Nora's. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen this, but I love this movie. I saw it when I was on my honeymoon three years ago. We were just randomly going to the movies one night, and I said, let's go see this. And I guess that's probably why I like it so much, because I saw it on my honeymoon, I suppose. But um, this is a super, super, super cute movie. I love it so much. So, of course, when I saw my library had it, I had to go pick it up. And it is really tiny. Like, look how tiny it is. I don't know how many pages it is. It's only... It's less than 200 pages. It's like 180. So maybe I'll read this one first and just, like, you know... See what it is. Hopefully this will be as good as the movie. I don't know. It could be vice versa. Usually books are better than movies, so I'm hoping it will be. But like I said, I love the movie. If you don't know much about it, the description is like super long. I'll just go by what I know by the movie. The movie's about. It starts off with Nora. She knows of Nick, this guy. She doesn't really know of him. She knows. I'm sorry. Let me rewind. This movie is about Nick and Nora. Obviously, if you can see them in the heart there. Super cute. They meet by chance somehow, and they just and the whole movie's about this one night. They go on a rendezvous. Her friend gets lost, and they try to find her. And it's just super cute. I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know if the book is the same exact way, but hopefully it is, and hopefully I like it. I will let you guys know because I haven't heard much about it on my usual people I follow, like Farah and the artsy gal 12. I made sure to look that up because I love her channel or the readables. Next book I got because I heard such good reviews from Farah. I eat words. Of course, I love her channel. Duh. And it is, I'm sorry, I have not told you guys the type, the author's name. This one, Nick and Nora's iPhone playlist is by Rachel Kahn and David Le Le Leviathan. I'll pull that up so you can see it. There you go. Okay, anyway. The next one, I got it's because of Farah from I Eat Words, no mystery that I love her channel, no big surprise, and it is Audrey Waite by, by, where's the author? Robert, sorry, it's got so many things, Rob, Robin Benway. Isn't that such a cool, I've never seen a really cool cover like that. Anyway, it looks super good, I can't wait to read it, I'll read the inside cover for you. Audrey Cutler's life has been, hasn't been the same since that song Audrey Waite hit the airwaves. All she wants to do is go to concerts, hang out with friends, and maybe score a date with a super cute boy who works with her at the scoop, the scooper duper. But now her ex-boyfriend's song, but now her ex-boyfriend's song about their breakup is at the top of the charts, 
and she's suddenly famous. The paparazzi won't leave her alone. The tabloids are trying to make her into some kind of rock goddess, and the internet is documenting her every move. Will Audrey ever be able to have a normal life again? Get ready to find out because it's that time. It's time for Audrey to tell her side of the story. So this is super cute. I I'll admit I'm a I watch. I know I shouldn't, but I, don't, I can't help it. So, <laughs> this book is probably the perfect one for me because, you know, it's all about scandal and paparazzi and all that stuff. What question is what I. Um, anyway. The next book I got is for me because I've been wondering this for a super long time. I haven't heard much reviews about it, so I have no clue. But it is Elixir by Hilary Duff. Yes, I totally got it because Hilary Duff wrote it. And I don't care because look at her, she's so pretty. Not because I didn't get it because she's pretty, because she's Lizzie McGuire. Lizzie McGuire, people. Who didn't watch Lizzie McGuire? I watched it a ton. I love Lizzie McGuire. And I loved her and all the other stuff she was in. And <laughs> she wasn't in that many, many, many stuff. But Lizzie McGuire, I got it because, you know, and plus, I think she will have promise. I've read mixed reviews about it on Goodreads. People hated it. People loved it. La, 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 la. I don't know. Like, you know, I wanted to see what I thought of it myself. Hopefully, I will love it. And I will read you the description. It's super long. I just want you to know that. 17 year old Clea, 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 what can I say Clea? Clea Raymond has felt the glare of the spotlight her entire life. The daughter of a renowned surgeon and a prominent p politician, she's become a talented photojournalist who takes refuge in a world that allows her to travel to many exotic places. But after Clea's father disappears while on a hum humanitarian mission, Clea begins to notice eerie shadow images in her photos of a strange and beautiful young man, a man she has never seen before. When fate brings Clea and this man together, she is stunned by the immediate and powerful connection she feels with him. As they grow closer, they, they are drawn deep into the mystery behind her father's disappearance, and they discover the centuries-old truth behind their intense bond. Torn by a dangerous love triangle and haunted by a powerful secret that holds their fates together, they race against time to unravel their past in order to save their lives and their futures. It looks interesting to me. Hopefully Hilary Duff wrote, was good and she wrote it awesomely. If she did, I will let you know because I love me some Hilary Duff. So hopefully it'll be good. Hope, hope, hope. And the last one I got is just the one I'm most excited about it because number one, the cover is really super cool. And number two, the artsy gal 12 or fashion arts books, I think she calls herself. I love her channel a lot too. She loved this book. And it was in my library so I picked it up. And it is Ashes, Ashes by Joe Tregiari. I don't know. Anyway, so first of all, we'll talk about the cover. If you don't have to tell it's a dystopian novel, I believe that's New York in the background. Everything's crumbling. You know, they're just like, wow, crumbling. I don't know what they're thinking, really. I love how the bright yellow is right there. Bam. It's super cool. I'll read you the inside. Smallpox, epidemics, floods, droughts. For the 16-year-old Lucy, the end of the world came and went, stealing with it everyone she ever loved. Even the landscape of her beloved New York City is ever-shifting and full of hidden dangers. As the weather rages out of control, she survives, she survives alone in the wild of Central Park, hunting and for, foraging food and making do with the little she has while avoiding roving scavengers and thieves. But when an unrelenting pack of vicious hounds begin to hunt her, Lucy is not sure she can continue on her own. Then suddenly she's swept to safety by a mysterious boy named Aiden who helps her escape by the hounds and urges her to find a band of survivors. Reluctantly, she, she finds him after her home is destroyed. However, new, new dangers await her. An army of sweepers terrorizes the camp, carting off innocent people and affecting them with the plague. Lucy and Aiden realize that it is up to them to save their friends, and Lucy does not know that her sweepers have laid a trap for her. There is something special about Lucy, and the sweepers will stop at nothing to have her in her clutches. So that's it. And it says, the world has ended. What comes next? Spooky. This looks super good. You know, ever since the Hunger Games, I'm all about some dystopian. I love the Hunger Games. Divergent. Love it. And hopefully this will be the next good one. So like I said, that was my book haul. Five books. And get ready for four more coming from Barnes & Noble soon. I don't know how soon, but I'll do it then. And right now, my list of reading, which has never, ever gotten this big ever, I know, I've been watching the story siren lately and I saw her book her bookshelf tour and she's got like so much to read. It's just that so many books. I've never I just started getting into this whole booktube thing, so I don't have quite as many books as all the other people have. But right now on my to read list is about 
After my Barnes & Noble books come, it's 15 books. 15. That's a lot of books. I usually just pick one up and I go. But now I'm like trying to read, 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 read. So hopefully I can read as fast and let you guys know how it is because I want to let everyone know what I think of the books are. And you know, some of these books may be old. People will probably be like, I've been there, done that, read that. Since I'm new, bear with me. I'm trying to catch on up. I want to read everything I can and whatever my library allows me to because like I said, I don't want to spend bad money. But that's all for now and stay tuned. Thanks.